Eve and Moses Korah and her twin sister Miriam were prisoners at Auschwitz as children. The rest of her family was murdered by the Nazis. So this is where I always remember seeing my parents for the very last time and my sisters and everything changed. In 30 minutes, we no longer had a family and we never knew what would happen to us and why they kept us alive at the time. And then they collected the twins on that selection platform and there were 13 sets of little girls between the ages of two and the ages of 16. And so I always say that this was the beginning of the end. Once we arrived here, there was no escape. And I became very ill, and I was taken to the hospital barrack that was very close to the gas chamber on the other side. And I was between life and death for two weeks. My uncle said I had only two weeks to live. So I was, I crawled on these barrack floors. Now you can look at these barrack floors. I crawled on these to the other end of the barrack where there was a faucet with water. And as I was question. crawling, because I couldn't walk. But we received no water, no food, no medication. So I had, I always say, I had a guardian angel or we can call it a miracle, but I also had a very strong desire to live. To live. I wanted to really understand. It wasn't a decision that I sat down in my chair and said, oh, that would be a cool thing to try. It was more something that evolved. That I, the little guinea pig from Auschwitz, a victim of almost 50 years, had the power to forgive. No one could give me that power and no one could take it away. It was all mine to use in any way I wished. And as I am looking at all of you here, I want you to know that every single one of you are very powerful. You have the power to forgive. No one can give it to you and no one can take it away. I had on my mind that this is the first Nazi. I mean, it was like a moment thought, here I am with this Nazi who's talking to me like a human being. Will I ever have such an opportunity in my lifetime? Probably not. So I am asking him an important question. Do you know anything about the gas chambers? Because the revisionists kept saying that there were no gas chambers in Auschwitz. And I wanted not a Jew who survived it, not a liberator who witnessed it after the event, but a Nazi who actually was part of it. And he said to me immediately, when I asked him if he knew anything, that this was a nightmare that he was still living with, and went on describing the operation of the gas chamber. I never knew that. In all the books, in all the films, what I have seen was that the shower heads, were, and they always showed shower heads in films, and then people being killed. We never saw the Zyklon B pellets, which they are displayed in one of the cases, as coming from the hedge. But Dr. Munch was a Nazi doctor who actually was stationed at the gas chamber. And he would sign the death certificate for two or three thousand people. So the, at the door there was a peephole. And he would look inside. And he said, as people were dying, the weakest ones were on the bottom, and the stronger ones would climb on top of each other. It was a mass of intermingled bodies. And the strongest one was always ending up on the top. And he always looked to see if the strongest person was still moving, that meant that 
and was waiting until the last person stopped moving and then he would sign the death certificate. Never any names, just how many numbers, two, three thousand usually. For 10 months, I kept hammering away in my mind, what can I give this Nazi doctor? How can I thank this Nazi doctor? And it's an interesting experience. When you focus in on one particular question to find an answer for, there are hundreds and sometimes even thousands of answers that will pop into your head. None seemed appropriate until 10 months after I began the simple idea of how about a letter of forgiveness from me to Dr. Mucci. I immediately knew that he would like it, that that was a meaningful gift. Once I realized, this is to me the key, that I even have the power to forgive the God of Auschwitz. And I said, yes, I do. Wow. And I wasn't hurting anybody. So why couldn't I do it? We arrived in Auschwitz. I was my children. Dr. Munch was his children. Dr. Munch signed his document. I read and signed mine. And I immediately felt a burden of pain was lifted from my shoulder. That I was no longer a victim of Auschwitz. That I was no longer a prisoner of my tragic past. The day I forgave the Nazis quietly, I forgave my parents whom I hated all my life. Some of you might wonder why did I hate my parents? And I will ask you simply, if something goes wrong in your life, even today, but particularly when you were teenagers, whom did you blame it on? Your parents. And I would say if they would have saved me from a destiny in Auschwitz, if they would have saved me from a destiny of growing up as an orphan, my life would have been much better and I was right about it. I, all I am saying to every person who is hurting, who is angry, what can you lose? If you forgive and you, it doesn't make you feel free and doesn't make you feel empowered, you can always go back and take your baggage of pain back, no one will stop you. So what can one lose by, by trying? Forgiveness is nothing more, in my opinion, but an act of self-healing, an act of taking control back over your life. I would like to call it a modern miracle medicine, better than the Obama health care. <laughs> You don't have to belong to an HMO. There is no copay. It's free. It works. It has no side effects. And if you do not like the way you feel without the pain from the past, you can always go and take your pain back. No one will stop you. I call anger a seed for war. They're angry with the world and they want to hurt other people. Forgiveness. People who are forgiving are at peace with themselves. They have some inner a peace that spreads throughout. And therefore I call forgiveness a seed for peace. Eva continues to teach her message of forgiveness around the world today. She teaches the others the lessons that we can learn from the Holocaust so that it never happens again. She returns to visit Auschwitz to commemorate the liberation of the camp. In January, she placed a candle at the official ceremony with Polish President Lech Kaczynski. President Kaczynski was killed a short time later.